Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So today we're going to be talking about Turla, a Russian threat actor. And you're probably going to be hearing quite a bit about them in the near future. Uh, hopefully not because of malicious activity, but because they've been selected as the threat actor for MITRE's attack evals. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a uh, ongoing project that MITRE puts out where they evaluate different endpoint security tools just to see how they would stack up against past threats. Um, you can see some of these past ones here. So they are doing Turla this year. Um, they've done Wizard Spider and Sandworm, uh, Carbonac and Fin7 previously. Uh, it's a really cool project. Definitely check it out. Um, this threat actor is particularly interesting. Again, they have a lot of different techniques. They have quite a bit of custom malware, custom um, command and control infrastructure, as well as a lot of living off the land techniques that are pretty stealthy. So I uh, could spend a whole snapshot series going into individual techniques they use. Um, we're just going to highlight a couple of them here. Um, a little bit more about the threat actor. So this is a um, health and human services threat intelligence brief from uh, earlier this year. I want to call out two slides just so uh, those of you who want to know a little bit more about kind of the Russian threat actors and um, where these kind of fits in, because, I mean, admittedly, it can get a little bit confusing. You know, you hear APT28, AP229, uh, Noblium, uh, Turla, you know, who is who here and, you know, how are they related? So um, you can see here that Turla is actually um, being attributed to the Russian FSB um, compared to some of the other nation state actors. Um, that Russia does have. Uh, FSB being equivalent to our FBI. Um, they do a lot of domestic intelligence and then also some foreign intelligence. So think of some of our other agencies that do signals intelligence. Um, this is really who Turla is and some of you know the capabilities that they would have as a you know nation state backed uh, threat group. So um, definitely check out this threat brief. Um, they'll go through some other information about um, Turla, their activities, um, you know, noteworthy attacks and things. We're going to dive into two different threats today. So first is going to, going to be a spotlight on one of their pieces of malware. Um, it's been called Tiny Turla because it's a very slimmed down basic command and control infrastructure. Um, really, again, it's going to be featured on the things that it brings along with it and not so much the um, command and control, the, the C2 implant itself. So kind of skipping ahead a little bit, um, what was interesting novel about Tiny Turla is, uh, again, they're using legitimate ways to uh, install this. So this is being installed as a service DLL. Um, they're going to masquerade as a legitimate system service. So it's the Windows time service. Um, and they are going to drop a DLL called w64time.dll. Uh, if you're a Windows nerd, you probably know uh, w32time DLL is the uh, actual uh, library here, um, you know, seen below. So uh, probably hard at first glance to tell that this is going to be malicious. Um, this is done through a batch file, which is going to, again, set up this service via some registry commands. And the whole DLL is actually pretty simple. Again, it's relatively small. It's got a few commands in here. So again, they can execute processes, download, upload files, um, modify some of the C2 settings. So how long they want to wait and sleep between functions. But again, part of the name Tiny Turl is because it was uh, relatively simplistic here in terms of their functionality. Um, so we have a sample of this malware, Tiny Turla. Um, Again, like always, we'll run that in Snap Attack. We can take a look here. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, again, we've got that batch file that's going to be run here. Um, so you're going to see that pop up, and this is going to go real quick. So w.bat, um, you're going to see it's going to do all of those other, um, creating that service again via reg commands. So you don't have to use like sc uh, service create, and then um, they start the service to launch it. So very quick, um, very, you know, simple here. Um, quite a bit of detection opportunities, um, not focusing so much on the malware itself, but looking more at the service. There's a couple of different ways that you could hunt for this. Um, so certainly, again, they're using registry keys to create the service. So um, looking for the creation of services in general is a good detection. I know we've talked about that on past snapshots. Um, specifically, they are calling this the W64 time. So 
if you wanted to do a threat hunt and see if you um, had any tiny turla activity in your network uh, this would be a good hunt query where you could again deploy that to your tool and you know do a hunt um, other ways that you could do is take a look at the service creation so even when you do you know the registry keys to create the service there's still going to be a windows service creation event so a 4697 and we're going to see that's being created here with the service name w64 time so this again is another detection here if you have windows event logs available uh, let's pivot over to another type of attack. Um, so this one's a little bit older. This is from 2019, um, but still gives you an idea of what their breath was and you know some of the things that they have used and the techniques in their arsenal. Um, I would definitely expect to see some of the PowerShell activity in uh, the attack evals. Um, in particular here, they were using a PowerShell loader. Um, they're using some persistence through PowerShell profiles and uh, Windows management, the WMI uh, event filters, and using that event subscriptions as a persistence technique. So you can see here the snippet. Um, basically, there's a couple of different things that this is tying in. So the event filters and consumers and it's really a stealthy way to be able to execute code um, and again it's going to be kind of scheduled almost like a scheduled task but this is through WMI so um, again these events they have scheduled to run at a specific time um, and just kind of like a scheduled task it's one of those ways that you can um, again execute that code so let's actually pivot over to snap attack take a look at this here uh, in the platform uh, again, very basic here. We're going to just kind of manually run those commands here in a PowerShell prompt. Um, so there's the different pieces here to actually um, set up the persistence. Uh, definitely different ways that we can hunt and detect this. Um, so let's go through and talk about some of those here. So if you are a Windows Sysmon user, um, hooray, they've got a couple of event codes for this. Um, this is one of the Sigma community analytics. Um, I have to give them credit because it is very simplistic and effective in its simplicity, but it is also not something I would ever use in a production environment. Um, aside from uh, event codes 19, 20, and 21, which are, again, specifically set up for that um, WMI persistence mechanism, um, these aren't necessarily going to be very portable to other SIMs, EDRs, and tools. Um, well, Sims, yeah, but not so much EDRs. They're going to have different ways of logging this activity. This is very much exclusive to Sysmon. So if you're a Sysmon user, hooray, go ahead and use this sort of detection. Otherwise, you're probably going to be better off looking at some other activity. Um, this one here, this one's from Splunk, um, from their detections, uh, their playbooks. A um, little bit more interesting, again, it's still using Event ID 20, but they're doing some additional um, time and some groupings on there. So another one that you could use in your arsenal. Um, ways that I like to look at this one in particular are through um, process creation events or through PowerShell logs. So um, as you recall back here in this, we were um, had all of these commands being run in a PowerShell prompt, so we're not going to actually see those on um, a cmd.exe. So like a sysmon one, a process creation event, um, you're not going to be able to see those commands being run. Um, you can see here some other threats in our threat library. So this is uh, um, APT29, again, another Russian threat actor using WMIC, um, again, instead of uh, PowerShell, but still using WMI to set up these uh, event filtering for persistence. So this, again, totally works if you are doing these process creation events. Um, if you're doing in a PowerShell window, you'd need something equivalent. Um, so this is the equivalent detection. This is going to be looking at the PowerShell module and script block logs uh, 4104. So if that script block text contains any of those keywords, um, you would be able to hunt for this. So again, this is why we talk about detection depth, having multiple detection opportunities here. So if you had, again, the Sysmon event IDs that you wanted to look at, or if you had process creation events or PowerShell, any of these three ways are um, effective at hunting for WMI persistence mechanisms. So that's our snapshot for this week. Hope everyone has a safe and happy holidays and we'll see you in the new year.